He he should have invited somebody from like Tanzania or something. Oh yeah, Ngazija is one of the islands. <laughs> Ngazija. I mean, technically, it's not like a colony. When you move there that early on, it's a dialect. It's like okay, you know, um, like okay, I visited Zanzibar, so it's like, so see, they're dressed like Zanzibaris. I, 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 so see, like, it's the whole colonialism thing. Like, even in the African Union intervention, it was the Tanzanian government that, like, intervened. Kenya. Hello, guys. My name is Mangi. I am from Kenya. Uh, okay, so today, guys, I'm here to do a geography now reaction in another, for another country. You know, I'm going to be doing these geography now reactions because, like, you know, somebody commented uh, and said that I do know a lot about African countries. Yes, I do know a lot about African countries. I am going to do the these Geography Now Africa reactions. Uh, I'm going to take them a bit more seriously. Not that it's actually, you know, comments and feedback. It actually makes it worthwhile. So, Ge Geography Now Africa reactions. Today, I'm going to do a Geography Now Comoros reaction. Um, because... Today I'm gonna do Geography Now Commerce. Yeah, Geography Now Commerce. Now, but first of all, guys, I'd like to ask you to like, like, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the videos, share them, tell people about the channel, and all that. Okay, so Geography Now Commerce. What's the Commerce? Okay. What do we know about the Commerce anyway? What's the language they speak there? Um, okay. So, so, I speak Swahili. Now in Commerce, they speak a Swahili dialect. Uh, called Kinga Kingazija, Kingazija. That's Kingazija is the name of the islands, basically of the Comoros, kind of. But in Swahili, I call we call them Kom Komori. Uh, I don't know how to explain that. But they have four islands: Anjuan, they, which all have Swahili names. I forgot them. Uh, and yeah, I think isn't Kingazija is either the one of the islands. Or it's the, or it's the name for the Comoros itself. But then no no no, it's Umoja wa Komori. No, yeah, it's Umoja wa Komori. Yeah, Union of the Comoros, officially. You will see that their flag has four stripes. Those four stripes represent four islands, and uh, one of them is still owned by the French. You know these guys. This is when they're colonizing everybody. But then those guys in Mayotte. They're still Swahili speaking people and all that. What do we know about the capital of the Comoros is Moroni. Uh, and like, this is a bucket list. This country, I think, is a country on my bucket list because it has very many of the same Swahili culture that we have in the East African community uh, and stuff like that. And what's the language? The language and everything, even the architecture. The population of the Comoros is about, I think, a million. It's not sparsely populated. I think it's a million, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong. It's either a million or it's 300,000. <laughs> okay, no, no, I'll say a million. If I'm wrong, I'll just write it out. Let's dive into this reaction. Let's dive in. I keep saying dive in. So, I'm gonna start playing the video in three, two, one. However, I couldn't find anybody from Comoros, so I got the next best thing. Say hi to my friend, Nick! Hey guys. Nick is from Mauritius! Yeah, I really don't know anything about Comoros, people. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, Shut up, Nick. He, he should have invited somebody from, like, Tanzania or something. In Tanzania, Tanzania is really close to Comoros. They speak the same language. Uh, Comoros is so far, it's like a bit further away from like my home country, Kenya. But Tanzania, they could have found somebody, right? From like a city like Mtwara. They would have met at least one person from the Comoros. Because there used to be ferries from uh, the Comoros to Tanzania a while back. Everybody, I'm your host Barbie. Ah, Comoros, Africa's moon islands, named after the Arabic word Comor, meaning moon. And you know what else has moons on it? The flag. 
The current flag of Comoros was designed and adopted in 2002 and has an interesting story behind it. First of all, the hoist side has a green triangle pointing right with a white crescent and four white stars inside of it. The triangle overlaps four stripes of yellow, white, blue, and red. Each of the four stars and four stripes corresponds to an island in the Comoros archipelago. Yellow for Moheli, red for Anjuan, blue for Grand Comor, and white for Mayotte, even though Mayotte doesn't really consider it part of Comoros. This is where the family drama comes in. Let's explain in... No, but then if you think about it, like I will say this I will say this in all honesty like a lot of these small islands that France owns like it's like France is like in Europe it owns like random small islands everywhere and like when they give when they give people independence votes they sort of like rigged so many like even in Djibouti it's the same thing that happened they rigged so many of those votes that those islands decided to stay as part of France, despite being miles away and all that. And then at the same time, so over time, it's just stayed part of the, of the French. It's like stayed, my aunt is still the French overseas territory. I like to call these islands the dinosaur head islands because all the islands are kind of shaped like hadrosaur skulls, I'm just saying. One thing you have to understand is that when it comes to administration, Comoros is basically like a tropical African soap opera. First of all, the country is an archipelago of islands located in the Indian Ocean at the northern end of the Mozambique Channel off the eastern coast of Africa right above Madagascar. The capital is Moroni, no, not the angel Moroni from the Moroni, Moroni, which translates to the heart of fire, possibly named that way because of its proximity to a volcano. Now let's... Give me a second, give me a second. I'm just gonna move this a bit. Audio. The computer is heating up. I need to cool this place. Okay. Fun. If you ever talk to somebody from Comoros, chances are they'll tell you that the country has four islands, Mayotte totally belonging to them. But if you talk to somebody from Mayotte, they'll tell you that they are French and that Comoros is just being clingy. Basically, it all just happened like this. Okay, guys, all in favor of becoming independent from France? Aye. Uh, nah, I'm good. I'll just stay French. Are Seriously, two. The main islands of the country which go by both French and Comorian names are Grand Comor or Nazija, Anjuan or Nzwani, and Moheli. Oh yeah, Nazija is one of the islands. <laughs> Gazija, Mwani, Moheli. During the move for independence in 1974, Mayotte or Maoré voted against independence and to this day remains as an overseas department and region of France. The Comorian government to this day still rejects the referendum because, hey, referendums are basically just a way for a bunch of people to agree on being wrong on the same thing, right? On top of that, Comoros also lays claim to some of the Ile Pars de l'Océan Indien, or the scattered islands in the Indian Ocean. Yeah, they kind of got bored and just got generic with that title. Islands like the Glorioso Islands, including Grand Glorious and Ile de or the Lily Island, as well as six small islets and Bantu a submerged reef with a barely elevated empty sandbar that is incredibly difficult to get to. Challenge accepted! The largest and most populous island is Grand Comor, located in the west, which hosts the capital as well as the seat of national government. However, it's a little more complicated than that. The second largest island, Anjuan, and the smallest, least populated, Moheli Island, each have a strange federation autonomy, which gives them a little more loose incorporation with the government. They partially self-govern themselves with their own constitutions, parliaments, and governors. However, to keep things fair, the union president that resides over the entire country rotates between islands, so that means the next president has to come from a different island from the previous one. Aside from the three main islands, you have quite a few islets especially found off the southern coast of Little Moheli, and a bunch of sandbars and reefs especially found off of the Bimini Peninsula on Anjuan. Cool sites include the Gritty Harbor by Old Friday Mosque on Grand Comor Island, Mutsamuru Citadel on Anjuan, and the country's only national park, Moheli Marine Park, located on Moheli, packed with sea turtles and tropical fish, perfect for diving. I feel like this video is kind of turning into one of those cheesy resort videos, like Welcome to Comoros, where your tropical dream destination awaits you. Well, let's see if this country lives up to those resorts. Dream destination. Uh, I will say this. The Comoros is like... It's like, you know, it's like the seashells, for example. I will do the Geography Now seashells uh, reaction soon. The seashells is like very beautiful. It's always in pictures. It's very... I think the Comoros is the same. An island nation. It's just underrated. It's just nobody goes there. Like, eh. So the Comoros Islands are kind of green and lush. I mean, when your island is made from volcanoes, you pretty much have prime dibs on first-rate soil. Nonetheless, they still do have their individual contrasts. First of all, because.
For how the islands were formed, all three islands kind of lacked good harbor zones for ships. This is because unlike other island nations like Seychelles or Sri Lanka, Comoros lacks an immediate continental shelf or at least an elevated underwater plateau to foster safe docking spots. This makes transport, business, and communication relatively more difficult than other island nations. On top of that, the islands are quite active in volcanic activity. In fact, if you look at the northern slope of Grand Comor, you can see several dozen extinct volcano calderas that freckle the entire landscape, making it look like the country has bad acne. Shut up! It fits my hormones! Grand Comor is also home to one of the most active volcanoes in the <laughs> high. Mount Carthala, which erupted more than 20 times in the past century alone. There used to be a lake in the caldera, but then in 2005, the volcano erupted again and completely destroyed it. Let me repeat that. The volcano effectively evaporated an entire lake. Anjuan is interesting in that it's kind of shaped like a triangle. This is because the three mountain chains, the Sim, the New Makele, and the Jimilime, meander outwards from the central peak, the Mitingi. As mentioned before, the island also has the best reefs off of its coast. Moheli is the smallest and least developed of the islands, which gives it the opportunity to exploit its vast nature zones, giving it the unofficial title of being the cleanest island. Overall, the islands have a physical makeup that sort of resembles that of Madagascar, in which you can find similar plants like tropical hardwoods, mangroves, palms, and fruit trees. Some of the animals are unique to the islands, like the incredibly rare Livingstone fruit bat with a wingspan nearly two meters long, one of the largest in the world, which can only be found on Anjuan and Moheli. Can you imagine this guy in your backyard? Yeah, and wait till we get to the Philippines episode. Less than half the land at about 45% is arable, and lots of the food still has to be imported since domestic production doesn't meet the food demand. Nonetheless, Comoros still has a few agricultural tricks up their sleeves. They've utilized their tropical surroundings to their advantage and capitalized on harvesting some of the most expensive products in the world. To this day, Comoros is the world's largest producer of the rare Ilang Ilang flower, which is used in perfumes and fragrances, meeting up to 80% of the entire world's market. Finally, almost every Comoran either fishes or knows somebody who fishes. You can expect a lot of soups, stews, and curries that incorporates fish or shellfish cooked in interesting ways like the langouste a la venite or lobster broiled in vanilla sauce. Man, for a country with so many internal squabbles, these people really know how to eat. Let's discuss what these people are like. Okay, so Comoros is one interesting country when it comes to populace. Because of its history, almost everybody on the entire island has a complex racial mixture. First of all, not including Mayotte, the country has about 800,000 people, and even though it's the second smallest African country in land area, it's the fourth most densely populated in Africa. The majority of people on the island identify as Comoran, and the rest are a mixture of all types of people groups like the Malagasy, the Indian, the white, French, and even a few Chinese people have settled into the country as well. Now here's where I kind of want to elaborate a little more on what a Comoran is. Comorans have deep roots in multiple people groups. Archaeologists speculate that originally the islands were settled by Bantu peoples from African mainland areas somewhere around the 6th century AD. However, some argue it could be as early as the 1st century. This technically makes Comoros one of the few African overseas colonies originally settled by Africans, which is kind of cool. I mean, remember the last time we talked about something I mean, like technically, it's not like a colony. When you move there that early on, could you call that a colony? Uh over time, Arabs came over and then they brought along the Malay, and by golly gosh, the French got mixed in somehow, and to this day, the average Comoran has roots in at least two or more of these people groups. So yes, that means that many Comorans may even have Southeast Asian blood in them. That's pretty crazy. The country has three official languages, Comorian, French, and Arabic, and most people are proficient in at least two... Comorian is basically Swahili, and it's not... Yeah. Not all three of these languages. As a Bantu language, Comorian closely resembles Swahili and is sometimes considered a dialect. It's From an early age a dialect. It's like, okay, you know, um, I want you guys to look at the Wikipedia page for Comoros, the name of the country. It's pretty much exactly the same in Swahili. So there will be slight variations. It will be like, okay, I visited Zanzibar. So it's like, there is Zanzibar Swahili and then there's mainland. There's Tanganyika Swahili and then there's Kenyan Swahili. It's kind of like that, I think. But I will visit the Comoros and let you guys know. All these countries are on my bucket list. Kids are taught Arabic from Quranic schools, however, Comorian is more widely spoken and French is the language of business and government. Culture-wise, the country holds fast to tradition. The majority of the population, at about 96%, adheres to a branch of Sunni Islam under the Shafi school of jurisprudence. Other faiths are also still technically allowed to exist, but are heavily discouraged and restricted. Nonetheless, Islam in Comoros doesn't really follow your typical Middle Eastern style format. Most women don't even wear hijabs regularly, unless maybe it's a formal occasion. And they so, might see, they're dressed like Zanzibaris. I, 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 
And you... Traditional sheet Omani. You can also spot a lot of the women wearing the traditional Nzinzanu paint mask made out of sandalwood and coral as it acts as a natural sunblock and it really exfoliates the skin. Now, the Kamoran economy is kind of struggling at the moment. It typically ranks in the bottom of the worldwide GDP index. This is partially attributed to the fact that there's a huge age gap. About half of the entire population is 15 or under. For assistance, most people are heavily dependent on remittance money sent from relatives living abroad. About 400,000 Comorans live abroad, 200,000 of which live in France alone. This also includes the Comorans that migrate to neighboring Mayotte in hopes of finding more work and quality of life. About a quarter of Mayotte's population are Comoran, and as a half-open backdoor to the EU, the GDP is about nine times higher than that of Comoros with free healthcare and education benefits. Mahorans and Comorans... <laughs> Mahorans and Comorans, they're coming down the stairs. You British people know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Mahorans and Comorans have a long history and similar culture that goes back centuries. Of course, they were all under the same sultanate at one point, and then under French protectorate status, and then finally when it came to independence... So see, like, it's the whole colonialism thing. Like, you see, like, every time I see one of the French episodes, it gets, like, weird. You know, like, it's like, you stay there and you, you, you actually ask Connie's whether to be independent instead of just saying, oh, this country is so far away from my home country, it should just be independent. So then, my odds being claimed by the Comoros, it's actually right because, if you think about it, the language they speak is the same. These are the same people. And it's kind of like you've made like a, trying to make a, like a North-South Vietnam situation here. Anyway. Like, nah, you guys gotta hate. I'd rather be French. <laughs> it's funny because Nick's actually from the UK and I made him say that. Ha! Now here's the thing, even though the country is relatively new and even though they are a federal presidency, they've had about 20 military coups since independence, realized or not. The first disputably fair election didn't even happen until 2006. On top of that, Anjouan and Moheli declared their own independence from Comoros in 1997, trying to reinstate the French rule, but France was like, eh, nah, I'd rather just keep my own. Which totally threw them off, inciting a confusing period of conflict for four years until in 2001, with the help of the African Union, they decided to reconcile back to Comoros, but have autonomous status. So as you you can see, Comoros has had enough internal tension as it stands. Now let's see how they stand on the world stage. Now, even though Comoros has had a lot of drama with a relatively short period of time since independence, they've pretty much been bombarded with diplomatic missions all over the world. One thing you should know is that Comoros is the southernmost member of the Arab League. In a sense, Comoros has always had some kind of tie to the Arab world since they were colonized by Arabs in the early 7th century onward to the Arab slave trade times, and to this day, Libya and Qatar are probably the closest friends in the League. Libya played a role in the conflicts after independence and to this day sends various humanitarian missions with medical specialists to the country. Not Tanzania. Not only been close for a while, but recently has been investing heavily in the Comoran. Oh, no, he starts with like another other country. Anyway. Industry and has opened up jobs for many Comorans. They're also part of the Indian Ocean Commission, which includes Madagascar and Seychelles. And Mauritius. Yes, Nick, and Mauritius which administers trade and cooperation agreements between the four countries. When it comes to their best friends, though, they might begrudgingly say France. Yes, they have the drama with Mayotte, and yes, they did declare independence, but they can't deny the fact that France has such a significant relationship with them and it still lingers today. France is the largest aid provider, trade partner, diplomatic engager, and even trainer of their army. Comorans might hate to admit it, but without France, they would probably look a lot different and not in a good way. In conclusion, Comoros... Even in the African Union intervention, it was the Tanzanian government that, like, intervened if I remember correctly so I feel like I feel like I feel like the fact that there are no Comorians who said anything also affects how the geography now video look like I mean uh, anyway the colonial power and everything like quadruplets in which three are chastising one for getting married to a brother-in-law that they hate admitting that they kind of approve of stay tuned Congo, the Democratic Republic, is coming up next. Okay, so that's my geography now. Comoros reaction. I will say, even culturally, culturally, the Comoros is more intertwined with like the whole Swahili field. So I would say Tanzania might be closer to the Comoros. Even, like, especially culturally. Because it's right there, it's off the coast, it's a bit far. But still, uh, anyways, I might be wrong, but then that's what I think. This is the first Geography Now video where, like, you know, that Frenchness has been overstated. But it's a lot, it's a, you see, like, it's like that in a lot of these African countries that were colonized. You get this confusing relationship about what colonialism was, 
And people think it's a positive, but in reality, people know. People know that colonialism, uh, it's not good. It's not a good feeling and all that. Anyway, later, um, asante ni sana or shkrani. It depends. In some parts of, in some Swahili, whatever, they say shkrani instead. Some parts they say asante ni. So asante ni shkrani. Uh, merci. So see, they're dressed like Zanzibaris. Like, I, I, like, okay, I visited Zanzibar. So it's like there is Zanzibar Swahili, and then there's mainland. There's Tanganyika Swahili, and then there's Kenyan Swahili. It's kind of like that. 